end of the room. Simon, what are you doing, mate? What are you doing? Come on. Get down. staff don't think that these are human beings just like them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to do what they're doing to people. This kind of abuse was more common decades ago, when the learning disabled were kept in large asylums. Nurses here are filled with a feeling of futile anger. In order to work here for any length of time, they often distance themselves and become hardened to problems. Abuse scandals were one of the main reasons asylums were shut down and patients moved to the community or to smaller, more specialised units. Now an increasing number of those are being run privately, like Winterbourne View, owned by a company called Castlebeck. With an annual turnover of £90 million, it has 580 patients in its care. A place in Winterbourne View costs an average of £3,500 per patient per week. But Winterbourne is a hospital which seems to have stopped caring. This is the worst kind of institutional care. It's the kind of thing uh, that was prevalent at the end of the 60s and that led Britain um, to gradually close the large long-stay institutions. Assaults at Winterbourne View have become endemic. This is a support worker called Danny, his victim, Simone again. She doesn't need restraining, but with her head covered, he kneels across her neck. A serious assault. Some of the assaults are even pre-planned and there's a tone of retribution. Here's Charlotte planning her next approach to a difficult patient. He's pushing it, pushing it, pushing it, so we're going to floor him. Um, he just really doesn't give a shit and he's a sort of bloke where we need him to give a shit because, you know, we don't usually get these much staff on today. Yeah. So when we got it, we need to abuse it. Um, so he'll be kissing the carpet soon. Oh, it's bad. Michael, another carer, needlessly controls Simone by bending her wrists. Another assault. Later, he tries to explain his approach. Well, what do you do then to sort of... Sometimes you might have to just put on the floor or restrain her or say that you're going to take things out of her bedroom. It has to be a consequence for her to, you know? Mm. In one of the weeks uh, where we were filming in their undercover, there were 24 restraints in a single week. Does that sound like a lot to you? Yes, one would be a lot, wouldn't it? I mean, because what you're describing here um, is a service, uh, a model um, of looking after people in which staff are just standing around waiting to pounce on people and restrain them. There's nothing else to do. Just in case, yeah. Then he walks away from one of those and down there. Then you might think twice about it next time. Right down there. <laughs> in fact, they're so bereft of anything to do that they're actually provoking incidents that allow them to restrain people. Come on then, we need to do some garden stuff, don't we, eh? Come on then. We're putting all these bits and pieces into the bag. Right. That's good, isn't it? That's good there are attempts to fill the time with group activities, sometimes outdoors, and there are carers who do their best. Most of these patients have been warehoused at Winterbourne View for more than a year. And with so little to do, boredom sets in. 
Here, they're being taught about underwater volcanoes. Support worker Graham stumbles through the text. Smokers are home to a community of organisms that thrive in the scalding waters and toxic chemicals. The organisms include giant clams and tube worms. So, underwater volcanoes, basically. For the staff, too. There is no point to any of this. There is nothing to do during the day. The only interest and excitement comes out of prodding people to get a reaction uh, and then implementing the restraint procedures uh, that they're doing. Graham is one of the main offenders. He first applied for a job here as a kitchen porter. Graham is a disturbing man. He's one of Wayne's lieutenants. He follows orders and really doesn't think about what he's doing. He just hands out abuse, hands out pain. He walks around normally in his jacket, scowling, really just not wanting to be there. And I don't know why he is, because he is not caring for those patients at all. Remarkably, this culture of abuse persists at Winterbourne View, despite a carer being convicted of assaulting a patient just two months before our filming. Melanie Nichols slapped a patient, a wheelchair user, several times as she was in the shower. She then forced wet wipes into her mouth. The patient's parents were never told the full story. They received £200 in compensation and assumed the incident had been minor. But that criminal conviction hasn't deterred some of the remaining carers. The threat of punishment in the shower and toilets is still there. Thank you, Sue. If I come back and find that you are with me, we'll be out of the shower, not together. Same will be in the toilet. Same will be in the cold shower. Beautiful. So you two. Castlebeck's bosses missed a series of warning signs. The assault in the shower and an incident where another carer headbutted a patient, breaking his nose. And then there was senior nurse Terry Bryan. He blew the whistle to Castlebeck about the abuse of patients in a four-page email last October. He named Michael, Charlotte and a carer called Holly he also named the ringleader, Wayne. My original email was to the manager of Winterbourne View. I had no reply from that, or from his manager as well. Um, so you sent it to the manager and his manager who was outside the hospital? Yes, he was based elsewhere in the country. Still part of Castlebeck. Um, no response from either of them. We put that failure to the new boss of Castlebeck, who took over in January. What should have happened at the time was the staff named in those initial allegations that the former employee um, made should have been suspended, and they weren't. So and you could have suspended them at the time? We can suspend staff, yes. So you could have gone in at the time. I mean, this is the letter. I don't know if you've seen it. There's four pages I, there. I, I have. No, you're absolutely Detail right. Yes, no, no. naming the perpetrators. Yeah. No. So you're telling me you could have gone in and suspended people? We, no, no, we should have suspended people. I, I'm not saying we shouldn't have. That's absolutely what we should have done, and we didn't do it. And I'm... You know, I'm not defending that, I'm actually saying we should have done it and it didn't happen. If that complaint had been acted upon, it's likely none of what you've seen so far would have happened. And Simone in particular would have been spared months of abuse. Until last summer, she lived with her parents in Wiltshire. She was born with a genetic abnormality, but still enjoyed a full and energetic teenage life. She likes to go down the slides and on the swing boats and look round houses. She likes to go to the beach. And swimming all the time. And swimming all the time. Oh, she's an energetic girl. Like, we're two old fogies. We've got a hard job to keep up with her. And what kind of person is she? Very lovable. Very lovable. Last summer, Simone began suffering unexplained headaches 
and there were some violent outbursts. She was forcibly taken into care and ended up in Winterbourne View. What was about to happen to Simone in a single day left even our carer Joe numbed. I've just come back from a very, very long shift at Winterbourne View and I've seen what is easily the most shocking thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Simone's day begins badly. That's Graham on the left attacking her. The nurse in charge of the day shift is Kelvin. He should intervene if he witnesses any mistreatment. He's heard something's happening to Simone in the shower. This is his reaction. Then he turns and walks away. Also present in the green shirt is Ali again and Graham. Even for our expert, it's profoundly shocking. This isn't a jail. This isn't Guantanamo. People are not here to be punished. This is a therapeutic environment. Where's the therapy in any of this? I would argue this is torture. Later, there are screams from the garden. Wayne's outside with Simone. He's poured a jug of water over her. It's March, and the temperature's just above zero. Yeah. Let me see what you've got. Don't like that. Come on, then. Stand up, then. Listen, touch properly, and then we'll have a ride. No way. Come on, then. No way. Come on, then. No way. Come on, then, me and you. Let's have a ride, then. <laughs> Come on. No way. You want some? No! All right. Shut up, then. Stop threatening me. <laughs> yeah? Go on, do something, then. Do <laughs> just don't have <laughs> Remember, Simone's a patient, Wayne's her carer. Ah! Basta! Wait, basta! Getting cold now? No. Fuck off, you. Prick. Your mum's a prick. No, you! Listen, why are you being rude? I'm not being rude to you, am I? Wet and cold, Simone's now been outside for 15 minutes. Do you want to come in? We're going to bring her in because she's shaking. We're going to bring her in because she's shaking. So she was in a terrible situation. When we finally brought her in, I thought that Wayne had gone too far, that the charge nurse would intervene and he would be in trouble. When she's back inside, the charge nurse does appear. It's Kelvin again, the one who failed to intervene in the shower. Wayne's explanation should have had him disciplined, but Joe sees no sign of that. Simone is often the centre of abuse, but the people, the carers who are handing it out, they're normally on different shifts on different days, so it's not so concentrated. However, on this day, these people who were handing out abuse before, they were all on the shift. The night shift has started and Simone's refusing to go to bed. 
Yeah. No!